I definitely think that there's a lot to the why because you need, because it's tough business, you know, not going to lie. I mean, it's not a secret. And you need to have something that keeps you motivated when you don't feel motivated. And I feel like the why is a big reason. For me, you know, one of my whys, I have a couple of whys, but I mean, my, my really, really deep, like, why I want to do it. I want to show my son that anything is possible. I want to believe that anything is possible, that I am worth investing. That means he is also worth investing. Yeah. You know, he is also worth putting in the time and belief in himself. So when, for me, when I have moments and days or hours or whatever it is, time, when I just, you know, just like, man, today's a drag. I don't feel like it. I got bad news, didn't book that job that I had three callbacks for or whatever it is, mm-hmm. right? It, it pushes me because maybe I might give up for myself sometimes. I would never give up for my son. Hello, both ones. Today on the podcast, I have Diane Foy. She is a personal branding coach, PR coach for all kinds of creatives, actors, musicians, artists. So Diane, welcome to the podcast. So nice to have you on today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, fun. absolutely. Absolutely. So Diane, you know what? Nobody says their own story better than themselves. So I'm just going to hand it off to you. Why don't you tell the listeners and the, and the viewers who you are, where you come from, what your deal is, and how you came to branding? Sure. So I often start with artists have the power to heal, transform, and elevate lives with their kids. I love that. Yeah. That is like my ultimate why I do everything I do. And so my super fan attraction method empowers you to ditch self-doubt maximize your talents and promote yourself with ease and i have a long multi-passionate background i do attract a lot of multi-passionate artists so like yes i'm an actor but i'm also a producer and writer and painter and (laughs) and i love that and because i first started out as a photographer and i i realize now that my journey of all the different paths all came down to I just wanted to be around performers and artists and help them succeed and figure out what skills I have to help them because artists have the power to heal, transform, and elevate lives. So I started as a photographer and did some fashion photography and some actor headshots and stuff like that. Then I fell into makeup artistry. I was a makeup artist for a long time, at least a decade or more. But even though I was more in the fashion industry, on my own time, I would be like on photo shoots with my actors and musicians and doing music videos. And after a while, I started to realize, well, obviously I want to be in the entertainment industry and not just on the sidelines. So I went to entertainment management school and I kind of figured publicity would be where I end up. And I started my own publicity company originally with musicians was my focus. And then more and more my music contacts would be like, I know you do music, but I have a film coming to Toronto International Film Festival or I have an actress. So I started doing film and working with actors in PR and I mean, I've been doing that for 20 years now, and I loved it, but, and I got to work with great celebrities and do the red carpets and do all these fun things that I never thought in a million years I'd be a part of, and it was great, but most of the time I wanted to help the up-and-comers, and the up-and-comers would come to me, a lot of times it's an actor and their agent said, oh, you need to get some press, go get a publicist. And they come to me. They don't really have everything that they need in order to get press. You have and touched on so many things. I, well, I have to you stop like, you. Yes. yes. <laughs> because I can't remember so many things that I want to remember to ask you about. So I have to come back to that. We stopped at Actors Come to You when they, when they needed an yeah. electronic need a press publicist. kit or a press kit. But they didn't and also because I'm in Canada, a lot of times it was 
Canadian actors that want to get their work, their visa for the States. Right. Well, that's probably interesting to my, I better get something and write all this down because seriously, (laughs) no, you're saying so many things. The first thing I want to ask you, the first thing that kind of jumped out to me was that you, you wanted to help creatives, but there had, and then you have this beautiful, I'm going to let you say, because they artists have the power to move the world something. Yeah, it's they have the power to heal, transform, and elevate lives. So, and, I, and that's where I want to stop you. Because yeah. what happened with you that you realized that? Where was the point where you said, This has touched me so deeply that I want to now help people like this so that I can help them yeah. touch other people? Well, I think I only realized it probably since I started coaching. <laughs> mm. And now I look back at it and I see the threads, right? Yeah. But I was so shy as a child. There was trauma in my childhood and I would escape to the world that artists create. What, no matter what's going on in your life, you escape to watch a movie, watch a TV show, listen to music. And I, that was me as a child. I would just get, I loved entertainment. When the Barbie movie came out recently, I was like, I've never owned a Barbie because what? when I was a kid, I've never had a Barbie. Oh my God. But what I did have, I had the Charlie's Angels, I had the Wonder Woman, I had the Donnie and Marie. Okay. So even my childhood toys were kind of pop culture musicians yeah. and actors. Yeah. You know? yeah. Yeah. Um, so I was just always, I just wanted to be a part of it. And I think in high school, yeah, they were only really interested in the really smart people that were going to university, yeah. becoming a doctor, a lawyer, whatever. The rest of the riffraff, what do you want to be? And nothing really appealed to me. And I was like, there has to be something more than secretary or assistant, you know? So I pulled out my Pat Benatar tour book and flipped <laughs> to the back with the credits. Because yeah. I'm like, I want to be with these people, these yeah. entertainers. And I looked at the credits. I either didn't know what they meant or it wasn't for me. And I saw a photographer. I'm like, okay, I am a photographer. Mm. I hadn't really done much photography, but I was like, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. And so then all of a sudden in grade 11, grade 12, I was taking it's photography like a courses. Drive, I find photography. Yeah. There are so many people that start off that way. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, because after I had finished photography, I was like, Oh, I should take makeup artistry to to complement my photography, so I can do the yeah. makeup and hair as well as the photography. And another kind of running theme as a creative, a lot of creatives will understand this, is that everyone tells you that you can't do this and this and this and this and this. You have to stick to one thing to be successful. I, I found that that used to be the case. I find now that pretty much everybody's a multi hyphenate. You yeah, know, I mean, I it's pretty power for the course now, but yeah. it used to definitely be like that where they yeah. would say, you and know, even other artists, that. like when I yeah. was assisting you wouldn't be a photographer, it you know, if you, photographer if you was started. telling me that don't do the makeup, just stick to photography. Yeah. And when I was doing makeup and I wanted to do something else, they're like, no, 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 don't do that. Like stick to makeup. And I would be like, but I get bored. I want to do new things. But yeah, then I, I just, after a while, I realized that everything I was doing was help artists thrive because I was way too shy to be a performer myself. Like that wasn't happening. <laughs> so it was my way of like, okay, let's use my own creativity and skills and knowledge. And I have a, I have obsessive with knowledge. So like I'm always learning new things. So right. I learned everything about the industry and publicity and then well let's talk about that for a second what are three things actors could do to promote themselves in a way that's not icky for lack of a better word i say that you know personal branding starts with personal development so it's really it's hard to build out that confidence if you just go to putting yourself out there and you're like oh i don't know what to say i don't know what i don't you know it's all the doubt that comes in but If you start with personal development of really figuring out what you want, why you want it, what your core values are, 
what are the limiting beliefs holding you back from really putting yourself out there? Then when you do the marketing stuff, you have more confidence in what you're saying and you've explored your story and found out what parts of your story would be interesting to other people. And that's kind of where you can come at it authentically and not feel like you're promoting. Yeah. You're just sharing stories. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's, I, I really believe that as well. There is one thing that I always tell people, and it's a super easy thing to remember when they run out of ideas on what to post or they're not sure how to post without feeling like, hey, look at me, look at me, look at me. It's hope which is an acronym for help one person every day. And if you can just sort of reach out in a way, and whatever way you authentically best help people, whether it's making them laugh or, you know, being encouraging or giving a shout out to your colleagues, whatever that is. But I think there are so many ways that we can reach out online that feel good to us and resonate with other people, as long as you kind of keep that in the back of your mind. You know, that's beautiful. So, yeah. Okay. So you were, we got uh, sidelined at uh, the press kits. So tell me about that. What, what exactly is in a press kit? Tell us for the listeners, for the viewers who might not know, what is to be expected in the press kit of today and how to best put one together? So yeah, a lot of the artists that would come to me for publicity, it's okay, They, I have a part coming up in a film. Okay, I need publicity. Okay, but then they didn't have professional photos. You have to have photos that are right. engaged. Sometimes the photo is what gets you in the paper, you know, because it's, yeah. it's, it's a good photo. Then what parts of your story can you share that would interest other people? So in a press kit, you would have, you, you want at least two to three, the more the better, different types of photos, but you also have to be active on social media. And that is usually what, you know, was the cold back was. In what way do you have to be active on social media? And are there any specific platforms where it's more important than others? Not really. It's more the way the publicity or the media industry has changed so much it used to be easy to get press or at least for me it was easy to get press in the beginning for someone if they didn't even have a lot of the stuff but as things went more and more online things went and like entertainment sections are pretty much gone in the newspapers here in Canada anyways so there is no writers to write your story so if it's online well They're all about advertising. And do you have enough of a following that you're going to add to their readers or their viewers or their listeners? If not, two people might have the great story and a great thing, but the one that has the the audience is the one they're going to choose. Interesting. Because they want you to, okay, if they're making, going through the effort of, you know, having you on the show and interviewing you and doing all this, and then they put it out there. They want you to be able to share that to your audience. And so it's all a bit more of a cross promo. So what does someone do? Because I know tons of really talented working actors who don't necessarily have huge social followings. So what's someone to do in that case? So then you have to just make a bit more of a priority to engage more on social media it's not about the numbers either it doesn't matter how many followers you have it's Mm -hmm. more about are they engaged with you are they commenting on your stuff are they wanting to see what you do and are you if you are on a show are you promoting it but yeah it's more to start I would say everyone has social media but a lot of times we kind of just ignore it for a while (laughs) especially if you don't want to be doing it if actors don't want to be doing it If you're posting once, okay, some people are like, I post once a month. If you're posting once a month, can you post once a week? Yeah. Just a little bit more. And then can you go two times a week, three times a week? The more you post, the more you can do it. But then it's not about posting either. Take, if you only have, you know, 20 minutes, forget about posting. Go engage with your audience. And. A lot of personal branding, too, is figuring out what makes you unique 
and separates you and what stories you can tell, but also who's most likely to appreciate them. Yeah. I always so say it's just as important to repel as it is to magnetize. Yeah. You know, get rid of the people who don't like you. It's fine. Yeah. They don't have to like you. The ones that really get you will get yes. you. And who exactly. cares what anyone else? Yeah. And so if you make a point of knowing who your audience is, and then as an actor, maybe it's casting directors or producers that you want to get on their radar, mark down all their profiles and make a point of going to their profile once a week and commenting on anything that they post. Just even get just get in front of their face. Yeah. In things where you're not asking for anything. Yeah. Definitely. So that when you do ask for something, it's more of a warm lead. Yeah. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. I have some tactics on that as well. <laughs> oh. Okay. So we talked about in the EP in the press kit that they that they need to have obviously professional pictures. I mean, if we're talking about actors, I mean that just goes without saying. Yeah, I don't know, yeah, maybe I, musicians and artists don't always have that, but actors, I mean, come on. What, you know, you have a lot to have of, that. Yeah, a lot of musicians just get their friend to take some photos. Okay, yeah. And I get and that not, because they're not, they're not professional. You do what you got to do. But yeah, yeah you got to uh, have some decent photos that a, an outlet, a print, or whoever would want to post. Right. Because it's eye-catching. It's like, oh, So cool, what that? else? What else should be in the press kit? So you want to have a bio, and a bio... And talking points, too. Like, you could do a one sheet where you have your shorter bio, but then have some talking points or your fact sheet of even if it's just had a role on this, had a, you know, just so there's some, the person interviewing you has some things to ask you about. Yeah. Put something fun in there that has nothing to do with what you do. You know, it like. Show your personality. Like if, what, if you have a, a hobby or an obsession, put that in there for fun. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that is what sets you apart. Yeah. I, I couldn't agree more on that. I think we have to look for the things that put us on even ground. And yeah. just so that we're like one human being talking to another human being. So, yeah. you know, that's why I'm always telling my people, you know, because people post about their lives. They, they post about if they're into food, they'll post about what they've cooked or a great restaurant or they're into wine or travel or their kids or their dog. People, even when they have a professional site, you get hints of these things. And I think those are the things to really pick up on if that really resonates with you, right? Yeah, Not just because, but it must resonate with you as well. Yeah, for sure. And that way you don't have to worry about the people following you. They don't have to be interested in either in it too. But like, I just love people that are passionate about things. Yeah. It's I'm contagious. But you're not a foodie. I love oh man, we are. <laughs> what, I'm not a foodie. But I That's love nice. watching people who love to cook. cook. Yeah. Because they're just so passionate about it. And I just love that part of it. Yeah. And I've had some friends come over and they're like, oh, and you can easily do this. This is like, and I'm just going, yeah, you're cute. I'm not doing that. But I love your enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, isn't that funny? The things that we're attracted to that, like, I would have, I'm obsessed with watching the tiny house, tiny house videos. I would never oh, want to live, or even van life. I, w I would have, like, phases of watching van life. I would never live in a van, but I was obsessed <laughs> with watching this. Really? Yeah. So, yeah. So I think it, it can be interesting, the things that we're drawn to, even if it's not something that we would necessarily want or need in our lives. Yeah. But I think maybe it's the, it is the passion, the authenticity, you know, the way that they're just out there doing their thing that's so unconventional, that's so yeah. appealing about that. Yeah. And you're probably watching because they love it so much. You know, yeah. Like, Who knows? It, I have I no idea I why. More. <laughs> that and Australian wedding shows. So there you go. And I'm married. Yeah. So it's not like I'm looking for a new husband. <laughs> so Who knows? But, um, okay. So that's. If somebody ha is in a show, that is always a great reason to reach out to get publicity. Yeah. What about those in-between times? And we are all going through a big dry spell right now which with the strike. So what about that? What can people in between do? Are there things that we can do or do we, do we just have to wait to get cast in something? Well, with media outlets, mainstream media, they're more about the current events. 
but podcasts, blogs, they're still working. And if you can come up with something that is maybe different, maybe, you know, one of your hobbies is you're diving in because you have all this extra free time right now. Make that a story. What the, what one actor is doing on this during the strike is making pottery. Whatever yeah. it is, that could be interesting because it maybe some of the media outlets that do cover the entertainment industry, they're running out of things to say too. So if you can come up with something that's maybe a little bit unique of maybe one of your hobbies or what are you doing in during this time and also show that you're not just sitting back and waiting. Um, are there sort of like websites or how, where would you pitch yourself to? Would you go to directly to, I mean, I wouldn't go to. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if we're talking about someone who's, you know, at a smaller scale, but still making a living, but, you know, kind of doing this yeah. and doing that. So is there a place where you find all of these kind of smaller media outlets or how does that work? Yeah, you can try to Google if it's maybe your local area. If you're living in a, outside of, say, L.A. or New York, like something, um, your local media might be an interesting thing because they all like the local story. But also for online, there could be like a lifestyle blog or maybe there is a blog about that features entertainment. A part of what I have my clients do is some market research of when also when you're trying to figure out what sets you apart from your competition or, you know, look at someone that's maybe a few years ahead of you of where you want to be. Where are they getting coverage? Where are they getting press? Sometimes you can discover a blog or a podcast that you might not have found otherwise. Um, I've started offering podcast booking as a service because um, I don't necessarily do traditional PR anymore. And part of it's just it's, it's a lot of work and you don't get the results anymore. It, before it was just there was a lot more outlets that would cover. And now you have to get kind of underground and find those less known outlets to get it and you're pitching 100 outlets to get like a couple responses it's exhausting especially when it's an unknown yeah yeah it's easy to get stuff for celebrities and more known people exactly but right most of us right. are not that right. so you got to think out of the box your local radio station your campus radio station look at the shows there's some show on there that's going to want to talk to a local actor or something. Yeah. You have to kind of get, think out of the box of where else can you look. Campus so radio. with that, I love those suggestions. I think they're really great suggestions. How would you, because as an actor who's not extremely well known, most of us do our own PR outreach. Yeah. So do you have a kind of a template or a formula for reaching out like an email or something like that? Is there anything that somebody oh, yeah. specifically should include in the email or not include? Don't copy and paste and send mass <clears throat> emails. Yeah. Don't um, copy and paste even if you are sending an individual email. Do your research. In instead, and that's also why I kind of like podcast booking, because <clears throat> I'm not going to pitch 50 people. I'm going to figure out what are the 10 to 20 podcasts that are a really good fit. And maybe you start with the lesser known ones and work up to the more known ones and start small. So if you're only thinking, okay, this week, I'm just really going to dive into a couple podcasts, like go pick two or three podcasts, listen to their stuff, go to their website, see who, what the host is about. Are they an actor as well? Or are they a coach or like, what are they about? And find some common ground actually listen to the episode so that when you pitch you can genuinely say oh I'm so happy I discovered your podcast I really love the episode with so and so and when when they said this this and this oh light bulb moment just something that you actually listened you know yeah. and also just to know something about the host of what they do maybe outside the podcast what is their goal and 
And if there's something that you could offer in exchange, cross promo. Because also I have a podcast yeah. too and I get a lot of pitches and I'm honestly, I'm like, what's in it for me? <laughs> you know, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking sure. for cross yeah. promo. And right. same thing of how I was saying that outlets, if you don't have social media following, you're not, well, why don't I cover this other actor who does? Right? Yeah. So yeah. in your pit. Unless they have a super interesting story or something yeah. that would be, it has to be bringing something. Yeah. 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 No, I get yeah. that. I definitely get that. So you want to have, yeah. you know, and also have an idea of what your topics are that you you would love on their podcast or on their show, their radio show. Yeah. Or even if one similar was to you was on recently, do you have a interesting or different point of view that you can offer? So if you're, you know, I know you just had that person you had on last week was Nadia. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you how it really goes. Yeah. But if there's something that you have a different way of doing and then also say, oh, and even if you don't have a big list or social media following and go, you know what, but I'm going to post it here and here and here. I will post multiple times. I will send to these people and just how you're going to promote the show, the episode. Yeah. yeah. So that you're eager and also when the email's very personable, you're not sending the same pitch to 50 people because you you took the time to really do that and then go to your next podcast. And so you could do a couple of these a week, right? I love that. That's I think it's so smart because, you know, we unfortunately, we have to put on all these different things, yeah. right? We, most of us just want to, but we have to be doing these other things. We have to even when you have an agent, you have to be looking for work. Yeah. You have to read your contracts. You can't just trust your agent to read your contract. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, there are so many things that we have to do. We have to do the pre PR. We have to hunt down the photographers and get our headshots yeah. and make sure we get our material so we can add it to our show reels. I mean, it's like this never ending thing. Yeah. So this is just one more thing. And yet I do think that if you if you organize your day so that you're doing at least one thing towards your career every day. Yeah. And even if you just say, okay, you know what? Monday mornings, I've got two hours time. I'm going to research and send emails to two to three blogs, yeah. websites, whatever. Yeah. You know, something like that. It makes sense because momentum begets momentum. Yeah. Right? As soon as you get something, the ball is rolling. And it builds relationships too. It's like a lot of... Maybe the podcast host is a casting director. You don't know. That's why you want to really know who the host is. And then the more interviews you do. And another thing with publicity, when publicists or you're trying to, you're thinking, well, I want to be in variety. Or like you, you go straight to the big outlets that you know of, but they're not going to be interested yet. So you got to work up to them. And also, are you ready to be interviewed by this major outlet? You get the practice in of telling your stories and if you if you start with these lesser known smaller outlets and then when you listen back or you read it it's like whoa i went on way too long for that or i said um and you know a lot the filler words and so it tightens up your stories too cuz maybe newer podcasts you might be able to go on for an hour but as you get to the more bigger outlets you might have two minutes on a major show you have to have your stories down so it's practice as well but then the bigger outlet also want to see that you've done interviews before they book. so what else we were at uh, electronic press kit so we have pictures we have a bio and we have talking points anything yeah. else that's important to be and in if there? you have had any media put that in there if you've had mm -hmm. any like interesting media quotes someone says something about you like a testimonial put that in but if you've been interviewed on different outlets make sure you list those or put their little logo there so moving on from press kits because i think it's important but it's something we all should be thinking about and should be working towards but the work has to go into the personal brand first right yeah it ha you have to figure yeah. out what it is that is going to set you apart from someone else what's going to make you what stories can you tell 
whether it's on social media or in an interview. But that takes the personal branding stuff, which is the personal development, confidence to share who you really are, vulnerability. I personally do think that actors kind of have a leg up. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I do because we are, this is what we do. We share our vulnerability. We share our, it's all about being authentic. So the good actors are the ones who are okay with their positive and negative attributes because it's all good. Yeah. Right? You can be, you can be vindictive. You can be petty. You can be jealous. You can be all of those things because that's something that you can use as an actor. It may not be a great way to begin a relationship by leading with those attributes. But these are all valid. And I think the most interesting actors are the ones that embrace their light and their dark, right? Yeah. At, but there's a lot of actors, I too, mean, that they're comfortable playing a character. They're comfortable yeah. doing that. But when it comes to telling my own personal story or, you know, then they get all story. weird about yeah. it. I have had actors say that makes them a better actor when they go through the personal development stuff with me. That because it taps into those things that maybe you're freeing, I find, when you do start telling your stories, then you get more comfortable sharing it. Absolutely. And to be yourself, like for a lot of actors, they do want to hide behind the character, behind the work, and don't really, they're not as comfortable sharing who they really are, you know? Yeah, I don't know. I For me, I have a view on that. And I think, you know, like people always say we're, we are diamonds in the rough. And my view on that is we're not diamonds. I'm not a friggin' Nicole. <laughs> I'm a faceted diamond. Yeah. And right, the what you see, what I'm presenting is the crown of the diamond. Oh, sure. And all the other cuts, all the other facets, those are all the life's I could have. Those are all the characters I can empathize with on a gut level. And some of them are bigger. They're up closer to the top, right? As you look at a faceted diamond, it has many big cuts around the top. And as the, as the facets get smaller and smaller towards the bottom, they, you know, they, they're smaller and harder to find and you got to polish them up and hold them up to the light. So you might have to dig more for certain characters. Yeah. But I think you must find something that resonates with the truth in yourself. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're just acting. Yeah. Instead of being. Yeah. And, you know, really to be really authentic on screen. And this is what we are demanding now is this level of authenticity that, you know, when you look back even 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 30 years ago, 40 years, I mean, it just got bigger and bigger and bigger. The acting, yeah. Right. If you go back in time. But today it's so small. So if it's not happening inside of you, you we won't. We, it's too much. We don't want it. So you've got to find that thing within yourself that resonates with that character. Yeah. And that's why I always get a little bit wary when, when people say they don't want to show themselves. They want to be the character. That may have worked 10 years ago, but I think today you must find something within yourself that identifies with that character. Yeah, you have to tap into Otherwise, it. you are just yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's why when you're sharing your stories, too, the more vulnerable you can be in sharing your stories, the more someone reading it or watching it or listening to it is going to go, oh, I totally get you now. Like, that's, I talk yeah. about super fans. It's like, I have this super fan attraction method, and... If you think about your favorite artists, actors, musicians, you probably love them for more than just their work. The way they look, the way they dress, the, maybe their personality, maybe they shared something in their story that really connected to you. But connections, that's what turns a regular fan of your work to super fan. Because if you, yeah. if someone really connects with an artist, then you're like, if you think about who you're a super fan of, you're like, I'll support everything they do. <laughs> I don't like horror movies, but if Jed Jackson was in a horror movie, I'd be watching it. No, because right. I'm a super right. fan, right? Yeah. Um, and that's what you got to do. Have you? I'm sure you've read the article. One thousand true fans. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
maybe I'll just recap it for the mm. for the listeners and the viewers. It's it's I don't remember who wrote it. I'll put it in the show notes. I'll find it in the show notes. But it's it's a fantastic article that basically says all any creative, all any basically any personal brand of a of a human being, whether that's a, a financial analyst or a, or an actor or a, a musician, all you need are one thousand true fans. Yeah. Because if each of those one thousand true fans would over the period of an entire year be willing to support you with a hundred that's a living of a hundred thousand dollars which is pretty good yeah you know i mean it's definitely a, a manageable living yeah so it's i think it's a very interesting concept much more so for creators who are creating their own work yeah like musicians like artists and things like that maybe not so much for actors unless they're also creatives but but it's a very interesting concept, and I think it kind of goes into what you were saying about the super fans. Yeah. So tell me about that. How did you how did you come to the idea of super fans? What what how, what was the genesis and the evolution? I think it when I first started coaching. Obviously, I'm going to coach on personal branding and PR, whether they're musicians or actors. I started to see it came down to you know fear or lack of knowledge is what was holding them back. And for what they want, use a different word, but it all came down to they wanted fans, media, and industry. So originally that's what I called it, the fans, media, and industry attraction method, because what like musicians, they want fans. Fans might also mean clients, customers, and then media, you want media or you want industry attention, but it all comes down to now I'm just super fans. You want, whether it's fans, media, and industry, you want them to have bigger connection with you. Yeah. And so that's super fans. There was a book called Super Fans at some point. I guess there might be a few of them now. But it really, at, a lot of times when I do say super fan attraction, some people might say, I don't really want fans. I just want clients. And I'm like, yeah, but that's what it <laughs> is. Super fans, it's you can be a super fan of a shoe, you know, or a super fan of a coat or whoever, you just want to make that connection so that they're like, you're the person, you're who I want to work with. Yeah. And, you know, if you can put yourself out there more as an actor, but also why do you act? That's what it really comes down to is why you do what you do. I guess we started this, you asking me why I do what I do. And so as an actor, why is it important to you? And I had a client where to me is that she would escape to the world that artists created. If no matter what was going on in her life, she would watch those teen shows and, and just really get lost in the show. So now that's what she wants to do herself is those are the kind of roles she wants because she wants to be that influence for any other young girl out there that's struggling and has a trauma in their life. That's yeah. a deeper reason. And so if there's two young actresses up for the same role, but one comes with that story, you're going to want that story, that person on there, yeah. right? Yeah, or, I definitely think that there's a lot to the why because you need, because it's tough business, you know, not going to lie. I mean, it's not a secret. Yeah. And you need to have something that keeps you motivated when you don't feel motivated. And I feel like the why is a big reason for it. For me, you know, one of my whys, I have a couple of whys, but I mean, my, my really, really deep, like, why I want to do it. It's not just that I want to see my dreams come true and blah, 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 you know, the, the standard thing. It's also, I want to show my son that anything is possible. I want to believe that anything is possible that I am worth investing. That means he is also worth investing. Yeah. You know, he is also worth putting in the time and belief in himself. And so when, for me, when I have moments and days or hours or whatever it is, time, when I just, you know, just like, man, today's a drag. I don't feel like it. You know, I got bad news, didn't book that job that I had three callbacks for or whatever it is, mm. right? It, it pushes me because maybe I might give up for myself sometimes. 
never give up for my son. Yeah. When you know your why, it makes you keep, it's too easy to quit in this yeah. lovely entertainment industry. I'm sure you deal with a lot of people who are dealing with all sorts of things. It's just incredible to me yeah. how many times I will meet actors, but they're doing kind of everything they can not to be successful. Yeah. And it's, it's like, do you want this? Yes, yes, I want this. But why aren't you doing something? Yeah. It's a very complex and multi-layered thing, our delicate little yeah. psyches. But, you know, we have to get in there and find out what the things are that are holding them back. What are the stories we've been telling ourselves that are not true? Yeah. Feelings are not truth. This is what I always say, right? You may misinterpret that the casting director, you've sent your audition tape and you never hear back. This is a, a typical thing, right? And I know so many actors that get upset about it and take it personally. And it's, it's not personal that you're feeling that it's a personal yeah. attack or affront or rejection. Is, is not a fact. Yeah, it has nothing it's, to do with you. It's <laughs> right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, Diane, this has been such a pleasure talking with you. Is there anything else that you'd like to add before we click well, off? No, just if anyone wants, I have a super fan attraction playbook that takes you through yes, all the different phases of starting with personal development, figuring out what you want, why you want it. Then getting into the branding part of the visual brands, your your photography, video, photos, your story. Then getting into competitive edge, what sets you apart? Um, why would you? Why do you want it? And also, you know, who's most likely to be your potential super fan? And how to engage them? So it takes you through all the different steps, and then yeah, you know, through that's also what I coach on. So. People can get that for free at dianefoy.com slash freebie. I will yeah. definitely put that in and the show notes. If you just yeah. want to jump in and have a free session with me to see if we're a fit, it's uh, dianefoy.com slash booking. Dianefoy.com is where you'll find all the links to social medias. I will definitely put art. that on the show notes. This is amazing. Diane, this has been an absolute pleasure. Thank you so Thank much. You. So, Tell me what you what resonated with you the most about this episode. If you found value in it, please hit that like and subscribe button. Make sure you go visit Diane over at her website as well and download that free book. It sounds like there's a ton of value in that. And until next time, you stay your bold and beautiful self. Bye-bye.